Hello, welcome to Bike Social. I'm Michael Mann. I stand six foot tall and with a 34 inch inside leg. Hello, I'm Leone. I'm five foot three and a half and I have a 31 inch side leg. And I'm Adam Child, five foot six and a quarter with a 31 inch side leg. In this video, we say, first of all, thank you very much to Honda Motorcycles for supporting us. But also we're gonna be bringing you lots of tips and tricks and hints and advice on not only selecting your bike, but also riding it and maneuvering it. So don't go anywhere. Leonie, you've ridden for about 30 years now, I think. What sort of difficulties do you find when, when looking for a bike to ride? Seat height is the first and immediate one, but also the weight of the motorcycle. But interestingly, things such as the width of the motorcycle seat can also be a factor. Um, and also, to some extent, the span of the geometry of a motorcycle, so where the handlebars are in relation to your body. So a number of different factors. We'll look at all of those in this video, which is very good. And you, funny you mentioned seat height because we've got a Goldwing and a Grom here. And actually it's the Grom that's the higher seat height than a Goldwing. Who would have known? Yep. Chad, as you've been in this game a long time, you've ridden pretty much every bike there is on the road ever. Yeah. Do people ask you about you know, how to ride this and that? It's the most asked question I ever get. You know, I have done over 200 miles an hour and I've raced and I've done everything, knee down, elbow down, but nobody ever asked me that. The first thing they ask me is, how do you ride a big adventure bike? Or how do you ride a Goldwing? And over the years, I've developed tips and hints and little secrets that, that have helped me uh, ride everything because I have to ride everything. I can't turn bikes down. So there are moments where I do look at a bike and go, that's big, that's tall, but I have to ride it. But if you use little secrets, little tips, it makes life much easier. You've got your own little processes, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Good, right, let's go into the car park and we've got a range of dealer bikes out there. We can look at seat height, seat widths, suspension, and all the rest of the advice we're gonna to talk to. All right. Right at the car park, we've pulled three uh, bikes out of the lineup. We've got a scooter, we've got a, a mid sort of mid capacity cruiser start. It's a Rebel 500, we've got the Big Africa Twin as well. Now this section's about how looks can be deceiving. It's not necessarily about the scooter being the smallest and easier to get on with. We're gonna take these bikes one by one and have a little look at the seat height and the seat width. Chad, this is Honda's Rebel 500. Uh, tell us about it. So yeah, seat height below 700 mil, which is pretty rare uh, for a bike of this capacity. Uh, my wife, funnily enough, tried this at the ABR festival and this was the one that she was attracted to because it is so light and thin. Yep. Jump on, see okay. what you think. It's fairly obviously. I mean, that is low. Yes, it is. Um, oddly, ironically, it's actually for me, the span yeah. and the geometry for my hands to shoulders. So my arms here are actually pretty straight and I don't think that's always the best idea when you're riding a bike. If you're on full lock. Full it's, too, it's straining too yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For me, I would need those bars tilting forward. Yeah, I mean, they're adjustable so we can roll those around a bit. Another point, just sort of sitting here, is also the levers. Yeah. They're for my hand size, small frame, small person, generally the levers are a distance away that is uncomfortable and I would class as quite sort of dangerous. It's a valid point in that I think some people just look at, as, as we were yeah. talking off camera, they look at just the seat height. And this is incredibly low, it's incredibly light, yeah. but you've still got to be comfortable with the reach, still got to be comfortable with the levers. It's got a narrow seat, isn't it? Even the engine uh, and the rest of the frame are yeah. all quite narrow, so you're, yeah. you're, you're comfy on there, aren't you? I mean, you're comfortably flat-footed, easily. Oh, easily. And a nice, nice change of having a bent leg as well, so that's quite, that's quite pleasant. And we could even change that, because it has a little bit of preload on the rear, so we could even go lower on that. Yeah. And even, because the tyres are quite ballooned, we could even put different tyres on and go even lower. Yeah. If this yeah. was the bike for you, you could certainly modify it just that little bit extra for you if you just needed to tweak it, yeah. But in the Honda range, that's got to be one of the lowest. I think it is. I think it is. It's really it's, accessible. It's lower than the Grom, it's lower than the PCX 125. Well, let's go try the PCX 125 then. Let's yeah. do that. Now we have the uh, delivery rider's favourite, the PCX125, a common and very popular bike. 
Yeah. But it's wide, isn't it? It's not, you know, not necessarily about seat height here. No, no. So the seat height is higher than the Rebel that we've done previous, but it's actually considerably lighter than the Rebel, obviously, because it's a 125. Yeah, it, it's not all about the seat height, it's about the seat width and where the weight of the bike is as well. If you jump on board, see what you... So it's easier because it's stepped through. So you're not having to throw a leg over a tall pillion seat or get your leg over panniers. As a contrast, it's completely here, so that feels nice. But I would actually probably want to sit there, which actually isn't the most comfortable for me. You've got tiptoes, aren't you? Yeah. If you actually sit where you're meant to sit, yeah. If you sit forward, which I imagine at traffic lights, etc., yeah. that's not desperately comfortable. So, yeah. The weight is massively different. And also, when you generally ride a scooter, yeah. you would generally ride in jeans and maybe trainers. Yeah, that's true. And that gives you yeah. more leverage on your ankle. Yeah. Um, so I find that, again, as a, as a shorter rider, that just having different boots and different trainers, yeah the way your ankle articulates, how tight your jeans are, yeah. versus cordura, versus body armor. Absolutely. All these little things make little differences. And when you ride a scooter, one of the advantages is you can ride in jeans and less protective uh, equipment. But scooters are not necessarily got the lowest seat, no. like, as we've proved with the Rebel. Yeah. But if you want lightness and you want the bars closer. And again, we've got the um, non-adjustable levers. Again, they're not much better than the Rebel, I'll be honest, yeah. But because the bars are that much further forward, it's less, it's less noticeable. Certainly yeah. my arms aren't as anything like straight, so. Let, let's move on to the Africa Twin then, because again, it's, sort of, it's, the, it's the polar opposite, isn't it? At the other end of the spectrum in terms of its weight and size and certainly appearance. It doesn't necessarily make it unaccessible though. No, no, absolutely not. Cool, let's try this. Yep. Well, let's move over to the Africa Twin Adventure Sports. This is potentially one of the most intimidating bikes in, 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 in Honda's range. It's got a 25 litre tank near as damn it. It's got an 870 mil seat height, 238 kilos, plus top box panniers, bars. It's got all the gubbins. But what I find surprising is when I've taken people on the Dave Thought off-road school on these bikes, people are slightly intimidated by it. Once they get on it, it it's not as, as high and as intimidating as the first thing. But we have got the worst case scenario, unfortunately, because we put panniers. At six foot tall, you don't understand how difficult these are. But these are like, these are like the Achilles heels yes. for people of our heights. They make it a lot harder to get on. So if you do have the option is go with the top box rather than panniers. But let's do this as gracefully as possible. <laughs> okay. I'll stand back. But you've got opposite lock, bit of front brake, side stand still down. Yeah. How are we getting on there? And because of the weight, it feels a lot more uh, fragile in my balance. But actually, if I'm sitting on the correct place on the PBX, I'm on my toes in the same place. So the difference is massive, but is also similar in the way it works on my geometry and my body. But we've got quite a lot of sag in the suspension. Yeah. You're quite a light rider. So anybody, like if I got on it, it's going to sag even more. If you got on it even more, what are you saying? You're a little taller. <laughs> but the more laden sag we put on it, the more the shock will sit and the closer you are to the ground. So even though we're on standard settings, um, you know, you look reasonably comfortable yeah. with that. Yeah. What can Lenny do about it then? What, what can we do here? There are options, right? Yeah, yeah. So the options are, so the seat we can take off and lower. That, that can be done with a standard seat. We can take a little bit of preload off the rear shock so that it sits more. So it basically makes it, the rider appear heavier because we're going to sit more which will get you closer to the ground yep. and we can take the panniers off to make it easier to get on the bike put some bricks in them yeah <laughs> that would be helpful <laughs> cool should we alter it and see how it goes yeah definitely let's have a go yeah totally the adventure sports is the, the, the larger of the two africa twins um so we have not made it that easy for you but but we have made some adjustments chad what have we done so what we've done is we've just put the standard seat on its lowest setting. So we're 20 mil lower. This is not another seat. This is just the same seat on a lower setting. So you take the pillion seat off and do that. We've taken the panniers off because it's just easy to get your leg over. So if you, have, if you don't need the panniers, if you're going to work, commuting, go for the top box. It just makes it easy to get your leg over. And on the preload, this is not the DCT. So this is manually adjustable suspension. So I've taken three clicks of preload off the rear shock, which should allow the bike to sit a little bit more. And there's a remote preload on this side. It's dead easy to do. As you turn the dial here, a click, and I've done three clicks. So now, in theory... Should be better. It's the moment of truth. Indeed. Well, it's easy to get the leg over. Definitely. That's a good start. And I've got my feet down, not 
flat footage, but then I'm not expecting that. Yeah, it's certainly accessible. Is that manageable? Would you, would you feel comfortable, confident riding anything? Yeah, if I'm coming up to a traffic light and I'm assessing the road, I'll definitely get my full body weight onto a leg. Yeah. Um, so preferably, if you can, I'll always do it with my back brake. You can't always. If there's a pothole or gravel that I'm not comfortable with, I'll do the other side. So yeah. I do feel like I can move on the bike. I don't feel like I'm stuck to it. You feel a lot, you look a lot more comfortable. And yes. this is the biggest of the Africa Twins. Yeah. And we've made it accessible. Completely. And if you, if you had more Christmas dinners, you would have more squat on the suspension. And furthermore, if we could go DCT, which would make it even easier. Yeah. Because then you don't have to worry about getting in the gears on when you're stopping no. and paddling around. Yeah. And in terms of the bar position, is that? Yes, it's good. I'm slightly straight armed. It's a little bit of tweaking, but it would be minimal in comparison to other bikes. Um, the levers, again, I can't do much about that. The levers definitely need a bit of adjustment. Yeah, but these are adjustable, yeah. so that's easy done. And again, the clutch isn't adjustable, but we could go DCT, which then you don't have to bother with the clutch. Yeah. But what I find surprising is when people see this bike with all the crash protection is, they go, that's huge. How do you possibly ride that bike? They automatically discount it, don't they? Just yeah. discount it. But we've gone, your height again is? Five foot, three and a half. Five foot, three and a half. Interestingly as well, we've got weather protection on here, an adjustable screen. Yeah. How, how do you get on with it? Or how have you got on with things like that in the past? Surprisingly, I don't always have the screen as high as perhaps might, you might imagine given my height, but um, I think it's very much a case of how your proportions are in your body. I've got long legs and short body, other people are the opposite. So your screen, as long as you've got a decent amount of um, adjustment through it, you've got that ability to make it work for you. Yeah. yeah. While you're sitting on the bike as well, just a point about pillion, would you ever can consider carrying a pillion? And if so, I mean, Chad, you might want to yeah. dip in here as well about your tips and tricks for, for, for carrying a pillion. What I've done, obviously, because I'm, you know, I'm five, six and a little bit. <laughs> so I always make sure every time I carry a pillion, and this, even if it's a small bike, get the bike on the side stand, get my foot behind the side stand. I get on the bike first, opposite lock, bit of front, front brake, brake, make sure it's in gear if you've got gears. Uh, and then get the pillion to get on while the side stand is still down and your foot is behind the side stand. So everything's being taken by the weight of the side stand. The last thing you want is something to get on this side, because if I get on this side, there's nothing stopping us going over. And also, you don't ideally want the pillion to get on whilst you're not on the bike, which you see lots, you know, when you're waiting for the ferry for the TT, there's a pillion trying to perform some kind of gymnastics as they get on the back of the bike. But if you're on the bike and that side stands down, then you've got full control. The bike's not going forward, it's not going backwards. It can't fall over because the side stands there and then your pillion can get on in any glamorous way they can possibly do it. Now everything we've spoken about here uh, so far and what we're going to be talking about later on can fall into two categories and they are really about confidence yep. and balance. Yep. Yep. Anything and everything, it's all about those two things. And obviously we can't just go, oh, let me just find some confidence. Yep, there no. it is, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, have yeah. a pill, magic confidence pill. Yeah. So uh, look, we're going to go and talk now a little bit more about uh, all the other things that you should be thinking about when buying or riding. So I hadn't realised how much uh, thought goes into the process of buying a bike or, or even just trying to get on a bike to, to test it. But So we talked about what, suspension, we talked about seat height, or seat width. Is there anything else that we need to sort of think about when it, when it comes to positioning yourself or getting on the bike? Just to try many different bikes, a lot of people look at factual things on paper and they go, seat height is this, weight is this, that's too big for me. But what it doesn't say is how much the seat lowers when you sit on it. It doesn't say how the weight of the bike is carried. You know, like we looked at the Grom and the Goldwing earlier. Yeah. The Goldwing's actually got a low seat and the weight's carried really low. And also I see, from my perspective, a lot of people at bike shows jumping on bikes to see how high they are and forget that the wheels are actually rigid and clamped in and it's on a little plimp. Yep. So they go, can't touch floor, rubbish. You think, well, you haven't got it off the side stand. It's clamped to the ground, so it's not a true test. And to come somewhere like this and jump on different models yeah. to give you a feeling like you jumped on the NT, yeah. which looks like a huge bike, and you were like, oh, well, that's a lot. Yeah, it's dead easy. It felt really agile, nice and surprising. The trans out was the same. So it was really good, yeah. So it's, it's important to just jump on as many bikes as possible. There's a lot of elements to consider here, aren't there, as well. One of the tips you gave us earlier on, on or off camera, I can't remember, but was talking about the fuel weight. Yeah. 
So there's a, you know, if you're looking at a bike with a 15, 18, 20 litre tank, full capacity, that's a lot of weight, isn't it? Well, I mean, if we looked at the Rebel, I think that was 11 litres. And the usual equation is a litre is a kilogram. So that's 11 kilograms. And then if you go to bigger bikes that have got 30 litre tanks, 27, you look at 27, 30 litres. And if you've just bought the bike and you're getting used to the bike and you're vertically challenged like myself, like I would remove all the panniers because I'm getting used to the bike and I'd only put a quarter of the fuel in just to get used to the bike. And once you're used to it, then add the luggage, then brim the tank. Um, and again, if you're riding off-road or slight green lane in, again, I would, I would never, well, try not to ride a bike off-road with a full tank of fuel. Ironically, I actually prefer a bike full, fully tanked with fuel because I prefer how it seats it down. But that is just preference and that's also a couple of years of experience of learning how yeah. to ride the bigger bikes. So, but it feels more seated for me, but that is just one of those things. It's, it's the right thing to do is try your bike and try different weights, if you will, and see how it feels in different corners when you've got a full tank of fuel versus half a tank of fuel. All of those things are really good practice. So weight has advantage and disadvantage. It does, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, also, and also remember, like we, we spoke about the kit. Mm. You know, you've got slightly... I've got stacked boots. So there's a stacked boot, so it's easier to touch the floor. If you're riding an adventure bike, lots of people wear really big, heavy enduro boots with no ankle movement. So it's harder to get your feet on the ground. Mm. So just think about also when you're buying your kit, how tight your jeans are, where your body armor sits on your hips. Exactly. Important to know as well, or to think about when you're going to try these bikes out, make sure you've got the relevant yeah. kit on. Because you know, if you're yeah. an, all wear, or an, 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 an all year round rider and you go and choose a try bikes in the summer with your jeans and, yeah. jeans and jacket, yeah. then wear your normal kit and and see how it feels when you're moving around on the seat because that if you are shorter you are going to have to accept that you can't always get your feet down so you are going to have to accept you're going to have to move on the seat and i don't mean it in terms of going into a corner i mean it slow speed getting your leg one leg off so that your foot is preferably on the, on the rear brake and you you've you've taken your, your bum cheek off and you've got your leg nicely sort of planted on the floor it all makes a difference. Short rider 101, isn't yes. it? Move, 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 bum, move yes. cheek off seat. Yeah. Give yourself a you know, firm, yeah. a firm plant. With experience, with knowledge, it just becomes a lot, lot easier. And like lots of people will see you riding a, an adventure bike, you yeah, think, yeah. and go, oh, well, but because you've been riding bikes for so long, you've got that experience. You know that when you come to a gravelly car park, you're going to stop before it. You know where cambers are, what the bike's going to be like when you fill it full of fuel yeah. at a petrol station. Because sometimes it's hard if you're parked on a slope. There's all these little things, but don't be too intimidated if you're a short rider and try a variety of bikes. And remember that a lot of the bikes now are so versatile. We can lower seats, we have DCT, we have semi-active suspension, we can lower the whole suspension package. Modern bikes are a lot more uh, adaptable than they ever have been. Manufacturers are making bikes lighter than they ever have been. 20 years ago, you kind of got what you was given. That was, that was the bike, but now we have adjustable seats, we have semi-automatic gearboxes, we have lowered different seat options, semi-active suspension, say, yeah. yeah, electronics way of changing the suspension. So don't be afraid once you've gone for that general bike, you know, if you go, okay, well, I want an adventure bike. Well then in the Honda range, you've got multiple capacities, multiple seat heights, multiple suspension options, DCT, not DCT, and there will be a bike that fits the way you want to ride. And then the point beyond that, if the bike doesn't quite fit you, get used to the bike. And then what I mean by that is do the slow speed drills, get used to moving on and off the bike, because you're going to get to a point where you then have to compromise. If you are my height, there is little or nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. So you have to then start to adapt in your own bike skills, which none of which are bad. All the slow speed drills, doing figure of eights in, in empty car parks, getting on and off all the tips like you've described today with getting the, the side stand and using it as your friend get used to that side of things because back to your point about the off-road school that's how you learn how to adapt yourself yeah. to a bike and it enables you to then have that flexibility to ride near enough anything out there and plus when you drop the bike off-road yeah. nobody cares no. it's laughter yeah and if you get used to dropping the bike i've done it and i do it a lot lots of people do it no matter what speed you're shoving the bike out of the garage it, it'll get drops regardless learn to pick it up. There's lots of different ways of being able to pick a motorcycle up. I can pick mine up, it's about 230 kilograms. I would be comfortable picking up the Africa Twin if I needed to. Well, want to, because it's somebody else's bike, but it's 
get used to it because actually that's a fact of motorcycling. What would you say to those people who, I see print on the internet about people talking about changing linkages, suspension, lowering suspension, getting lower suspension kits, whether it's from the internet or from your dealer, whatever, but yeah. is, is that is that realistically, is that a good thing to do when you change it, you're, you're affecting the geometry and the, the rideability of a bike, right? It depends what, what kind of bike you're doing that to, in, in my mind. So some bikes you can change the geometry quite a lot by putting different linkages or dropping the forks through. If it's recommended by Honda or another manufacturer, then they've tested that bike stability on those settings. So then, therefore it's a safe bike. Yeah. Um, and obviously if you change the geometry on a fire blade and you're pushing for a lap time, you're gonna feel that. If you're changing the geometry on a 500 Rebel slightly, and you're just using that for commuting, then you know, we're not pushing for that two tenths and, and that extra lap time. So there's, there's a lot to be gained, but I think, as I said before, we've, we've never had it so good. We've got electronic suspension, we've got changeable seat heights, we've got lighter bikes than we've ever had before. And I think most bikes will fit most people. It's only the extreme cases where you're going to have to start actually lowering and dropping suspension. I would recommend if you don't have electronic suspension, going and getting your bike set up for you. So customising it and modifying it to you just to make sure that it is as perfect as it can be for you. But beyond that, personally, I don't think changing the geometry significantly to a, let's say, um, an adventure style bike and actually dropping it to the, so you decrease your suspension travel, I wouldn't say it's a good idea. I would say go with what you've got. Yeah. Something you mentioned earlier on, Leonie, was um, looking at sort of the past catalogue for lower yeah. seats or, or um, you mentioned something about, uh, what was it called, dog leg levers yeah. and, um, but even crash protection potentially, yes. you know, if you're not that confident, exactly. chuck a few engine bar yeah. protectors on there or uh, yeah. whatever it takes. It's, it's another, it's, there's so many hints and tips out there, aren't there? Yeah. It's like you've, you've, you've hit on the point so many times, it's getting comfortable. Yeah. If you can get those levers com slightly closer to you and you feel more comfortable, that gives you more confidence. If you can move the bars a couple of mil closer to you, that gives you more confidence. If you can get the seat 10, 20 mil lower, it gives you more confidence. And all those little confidence steps will just build and build and build. And then before you know it, you're, you're riding you know, an adventure sports bike off-road and you're five foot three, five foot two. So let's say, like, hypothetically, Leonie, let's say you took that Africa Twin Adventure Sports out on its low seat heighting without the pan, is whatever, whatever yeah. suits you. You go down the road, what's yeah. the first thing you think about when you approach the next, I don't know, set of traffic lights or, or if there's a bit of gravel on the road or a pothole or a roundabout? After years of riding different bikes, I've got used to choosing a foot. Um, and you have to, as you're assessing, coming up to a junction, traffic lights, is there a, is there a, a lump of tarmac that you can use as your friend, as it were? Oh, is there a pothole to avoid or gravel? Gravel is the, the enemy. Um, but it, it's a case of seeing it and, and thinking forward. And if you can, avoid stopping. That's an, that's an idea. And I know it sounds really strange, but if you can reduce your speed and just keep going so you don't have to put your feet down, it's always a benefit, that kind of thing. Yeah, and also looking at cambers. Yeah. So on Country Road, you get quite a lot of camber. If you stop and the bike is on the crest of the camber and your left foot isn't, mm. that's a long, a long way down. But as, as a shorter rider who rides big bikes that's what i'm always looking at you know it's things that you will never even think about that we go all like you know you enter a, a pub car park yeah. and it's gravel you're like yeah. well, i'm not going to park in the pub car park i'll park at the front because i don't want to get stuck in yeah. in the gravel or i need to get a really good skill foot down that's where rather than me racing up to those lights and stopping i'm just going to roll up to those lights and hopefully they'll go green and then i can change and go so if you're on a you're on a let's say Goldwing or something that's very heavy or you're an Africa Twin and you're you want to park on the side of the road on, a, on, a, on an incline road, what do you do? For me to put a, if it was an incline, I would make sure that the side stand is down and the bike is leaning on the side stand. Then I wouldn't. So you're, get, you're pointing in the direction of the road and, get, and then so towards if, the curve. So if we've got an incline like that, the bike is here, the side stand goes down and it and it leans so that it almost as if the bike's going to topple over. Then I wouldn't even try getting on the bike. I would push it round. So it's facing uphill. Yeah. So now we are absolutely flat. Then I would get on the bike. So you're looking a little bit awkward and when I'm moving it backwards, I'd keep the side stand down. So if, again, use that side stand. The side stand's your friend. Um, and don't be afraid to push the bike forwards or backwards with the side stand down, then get it facing up the hill so it's level and then yeah. go away. Um, another tip on hills is use the hill to your advantage and by that I mean ride up the hill especially if you're like on a um, car parking space or a, a parking space and then roll backwards into the hill so use the hill to bring you down because I don't know about you yeah, yeah. but it's smaller a bigger bike is it takes a lot of energy so don't bother doing things that take extra energy 
use the engine, use the hill, use the things around you to enable use you. Use gravity. Yes, exactly, yeah. to bring you back in. And it, it preserves a bit of energy, it enables you to then carry on. And sometimes what I see quite often is people struggle a little bit and then they, then they get anxious and then they get worried and then it, and it builds up and it builds up to some kind of crescendo where they end up actually falling over. So if you are like in a situation, and I've done it where I've parked a bike and gone, oh, I've left out on a hill, it's starting to rain, it's wet cobbles, full tank of fuel, just go, all right, well, just, you know, give us a few minutes, let me just think about this, you know, tell your mates to wait five minutes while you just sort your bike out and, and get your kit in order, whether that's moving the bike without your gloves on or moving the bike without your helmet on so it's facing uphill and then put your helmet on because often people do it when they're fully kitted up yeah. in winter kit then they start sweating and then they start yeah. panicking so sometimes it's better to just get the bike somewhere where you know you can make a nice smooth exit then put all your kit on and then get away so don't try not to get flustered try not to panic and uh, as we've said before it's all about building that confidence and riding going to any off-road school yeah. that really really helps as well um another point about people giving you help because you're smaller and you sometimes got a bigger bike don't be afraid to say no to help and I know that sounds counterintuitive but somebody else's idea of giving you help might off balance you yeah I move a big bike around leaning it against my body so yeah. everybody always gets the bike and straightens it up away from me at which point it's well out of my range then it balances off Obviously, the, yes, yeah, exactly. yeah it happens to me all yeah. the time yeah and it, so I have had to learn to say no but thank you. And I have had to say, because people get really, really upset that they can't help me. And I'm like, if you, ha if you want to help, that's fine. But please allow it to lean against parts of my body. Yeah. And it sounds quite aggressive, but it isn't meant to be rude. It's just a case of they're actually making your situation worse. And they're only trying to help and that's fine. But actually learning how to communicate that is better. A lot of tips, a lot of hints there. Is there anything that we've missed that you think you want to talk about? Just building that confidence. And even if that is, you know, if your bike is on the driveway and you've got a spare 20 minutes, you don't have to be in bike kit. Just, get, just push it around in circles. Bring it forwards, bring it backwards, get it off its side stand. Do it in a nice, calm, relaxed feeling. Don't be the first time you do it when you've got winter gloves on, winter boots, helmet, pouring with sweat, panicking, trying to lift off the bike. The more you feel relaxed with that bike and finding that natural balance, the more you'll, you'll, your confidence, and that is all what it is, it's about confidence. And secondly, don't just go on the spec sheet. Yeah. Don't just go on the weight. You know, like we proved earlier, the, the wing, lower seat than the grom. You know, the, the Africa twin, we could lower that, we can change the seat. It's how the bike feels, the balance, and it's getting comfortable with it. Sure, sure. Practice makes perfect, right? Things I would suggest is practice in your own home environment, and if you feel like you can, learn how to pick the bike off the ground. I have done it with my bike um, and I put some curtains down on my lawn and I put my bike down on the ground and then I learned to lift it up and there's lots of different ways of doing it I won't recommend which one but I know which one suits me and I've lifted it up um, the other place I know personally I've been caught out is when I've got to a petrol station and the pump is without fuel so you then have to learn how to paddle it backwards so it's there are slow speed maneuvering elements that you need to learn how to do and if you can't pedal it backwards then you have to learn how to get off and push it backwards and actually have that confidence to to fight with a few cars that might be in a petrol station or other people and actually then live your life on a, as a motorcyclist ordinarily. Marvellous. Thank you both so much for that. We'll have everything written down for you uh, if you're a bit bamboozled with all of the information that's coming your way. We'll have everything written down for you in an article that features on bikesocial.co.uk. Thanks, Leonie. Thanks, Chad. Uh, your insight, both of you, have been uh, impeccable and useful and I've learned a lot as well. Uh, thanks to you guys for uh, watching and uh, staying tuned. If you've got any hints or tips or help or advice, feel free to add them in the comments below or come to our Facebook group, which is called Bennett's Bike Social. Uh, come and talk to us there. And uh, yeah, thanks again. With a thank you to Honda Motorcycles as well. See you next time.
yeah. Am I going on too long? I'll try and make that a bit quicker. Yeah. You just carry on setting up and we'll talk about what we're going to talk about. Try not to get run over. By a silent car. Brilliant. All right, mate, you crack on. A bit of a roundup and, and, and talking about all the other things that we haven't talked about yet. I've never really seen anybody drive with one on the roof rack, just <laughs> one queue.